Yes, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition, another episode of From Bromley with Love. This isn't a deep dive and the, this isn't an interview. This is just me chatting. And I think one of the reasons why I wanted, I wanted to do this one as a bit of fun. Obviously, at the time of recording, Bromley played Dagenham and Redbridge on Tuesday night. I'll be there. I'll be I'll be at that game. Is it Victoria Road? Can never remember if that crown's called Victoria Road. It must be Victoria Road. So I'll be at that game um, tomorrow. And there'll be a deep dive that will follow on Wednesday night. Colin will be in will in will be in situ for that one. So there'll be a deep dive that covers both the Oldham game and the Dagenham game. Um, so rather than me do the Oldham one, then the Dagenham one, we'll do two in one. But prior to that, I kind of just wanted to kind of touch on a, a, a bit of fun stuff. I think of last week, Grant Smith was announced as the Bromley Player of the Month. And after Bromley's 3-0 win against Oldham on Saturday, I started thinking about kind of like, I don't know what you call those lists, but effectively where you look at like the top three or the top five, I've called it top five players for Bromley so far this season. And I think the reason why I thought about top five is because Bromley have now entered the top five of the Van Rama National League for the first time this season. Following that 3-0 win, Bromley are in fourth place. Nine games, 15 points. I mean, it, it's still early doors. I wouldn't be reading too much into it, but it's quite telling that first place in the league is Chesterfield, who lost the player final. Second place, or third, I can't remember on goal difference, um, Barnett are there, who were fifth in the National League last season. Bromley are fourth, who were seventh in the National League last season. Woking are fifth, who were third in the National League last season. So four of the current top five all finished in the Vanarama National League playoffs last season. So that's just been quite interesting to kind of look at. And although the league is an early version of the table, I think it is pertinent to see that some of the stronger sides last season are showing face again and showing that they intend to be there or thereabouts going forward into the season if they have luck with injuries. But like I say, Grant Smith won the Bromley FC, official Bromley FC Player of the Month award um, for August. And I thought about, well, who have been the best players for Bromley thus far this season? And like I say, it's a bit of fun. So I looked at all of the players that have played this season and this, these are my top five. These are my, these are, sorry, my top five performing Bromley players this season. And what I want you to do is have a listen, have a look at my uh, top five and my rationale and my justification for my top five, and then go and make your own list and get at me in the comments below. Go and make your own list and say, who have been the top five performers for Bromley this season? It doesn't mean they all have to have played all nine games because three of my top five haven't even played all the games this season. So there is no criteria that they must have played a certain amount of games. For me, it's just been about who's had the most impact relative to uh, performances in the side. So without any further ado, let me bring this up on the stage, on the screen, sorry. And you can clearly see from image number one that my player of the season thus far, after nine games of the Van Rama National League season, it goes without saying he's already won one player of the month at Bromley. And of course, it's Grant Smith. I, I think it's a no-brainer. Um, in his record thus far, He's played eight of the nine games we've played uh, this season. And I think we've, when we look at performances at home against Wildstone, away against Rochdale, away against Kidderminster, home against Southend, away against Altrinham, time and time again, Grant Smith has made point-saving saves. And not just like routine saves that have kept us in the game or won us the game, but spectacular saves. There's been saves that he's made where he's had no right to even make those saves. But we also have to be mindful because sometimes with goalkeepers, if you're not a goalkeeper yourself, and if you don't study the art of goalkeeping, and I'm not trying to pretend that I'm some kind of expert, but if you don't study the art of goalkeeping, it's easy to try and say, oh, he's made a spectacular save and that's why he's been good. I think it's more than that. I think Grant Smith has had a, has added um, a level of assurance to the back line alongside the, the like the core five defenders as well. But you speak to many top managers and you speak to many get many players who've 
played the game, they will always say, particularly defenders, that if you've got a solid goalkeeper behind you who marshals the box well, that makes the defence even harder uh, to break down because you know your keeper is kind of marshaled in that that 18-yard box and marshalling the line that the defence holds and so on and so forth. And again, quite pertinent is that in the post-match after Oldham, Andy made a point of saying that he heard a call that uh, Grant gave near the end of the match. And he said that, to, to paraphrase Andy's words, he said he was buzzing for that call. He said it was a fantastic call. Obviously, Andy's the next keeper. But I think this is a no-brainer. I mean, the fact that Grant Smith won Bromley, Bromley's Player of the Month award means that the large majority of Bromley fans who voted obviously voted for Grant Smith. So I don't think anyone would be disagreeing with me. Grant Smith is our best performing player this season. The second best performing player this season. Drum roll, please. Sam Woods. Sam Woods, I think, is our second best player this season. Now, we've played nine, Bromley have played nine games this season. Sam Woods has only played five of those games. He scored two goals in those five games. He's not even in the team to be a goal scorer. He scored two goals in those five games. But crucially, in the five games that Sam Woods has played, no defeats. Four of those games have been victories. One has been a draw. Um, again, if you if you read the, the 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 kind of match reports or the good, the bad, and the ugly, because they're not really match reports. If you read my analysis of the games thus far this season, if you pick up the non-league paper of the games that I've reported on this season, I've been given Sam Woods eights, sevens, nines, regularly given him nines. He has completely changed the dynamics of this Bromley side. Yes, I I did a video on Billy Bingham, and I still think that Billy Billy Bingham was an amazing stalwart for Bromley. Um, he was a, a key fundamental member of the side that finished seventh in two out of the three seasons, won the FA Trophy in the other season. But Billy Bingham was a completely different player to Sam Woods. For this iteration of this Bromley side, Sam Woods has been the right um, jigsaw piece that has made everybody else better. Colin and I spoke uh, in the deep dive after the Maidenhead game that Sam Wood's biggest attribute, or what we feel is his biggest attribute, is he makes everybody else around him be more comfortable in their own game, whether that's shielding the, the central three, um, whether that's filling the gaps when the, when the fullbacks or wingbacks go forward, whether that's breaking down play so that teams can't go through the middle um, or through the spine of, of Bromley's team, whether that's once he's broken down play, distributing to our ball carriers, whether that be Louis, whether that be uh, Corey, whether that be Ben Crowhouse. And what we've noticed in recent games, he's added goals. He's added goals. And that was the one thing we didn't think he'd add. He's, he, he's added goals and he's added forward momentum. That maidenhead game, Sam Woods was involved in three out of the four goals, maybe all four. So he's shown us an attacking side to his game as well, as well as being a, a threat at set pieces, both defensively and offensively. So for me, despite only playing five games, in terms of impact, Sam Woods is the second best player for Bromley this season. It's thus far, we should say. In third place, is that a drum roll? Oh, well, Corey Whiteley. Nine appearances, two goals. I had to think about this one. Why have I put Corey third? I just think that Corey's on a real good run of form. I think it, it, it's hard with someone like Corey because I think Corey underwhelmed last season in terms of goals scored. Corey, and I'd love to get, um, you know what, Corey, if you're listening to this or if somebody sends this to Corey, I'd love to sit down with Corey and talk about his career. For those of you who don't know about Corey Whiteley, Corey, when he was younger, banged in goals for fun at Enfield. He banged in goals for fun at Dagenham. He banged in goals for fun at um, Ebbsfleet, right? Corey Whiteley is a goal scorer. And I'm talking about the Corey Whiteley who tore it up in his mid to late 20s, right? Highly sought after player, eventually got his move to the Football League with Newport and well-deserved as well. Obviously, he's still in the National League now. I think Corey scored five last season. He's a much better player than that in terms of goal scored. He, he obviously had quite a lot of assists as well. But the Corey that I have seen this season, when Corey is on form, he's basically unplayable. He's in my mind. And I think 
At the start of this season, in the first few games before Louis came back, he suffered because Corey was the kind of, he was the outlet player. He was the, the outlet source of creativity. And I think sides shut him down. Opposition sides shut him down. But probably since that Wildstone game, who do we play after Wildstone? In fact, we played Kidderminster. Probably since the Rochdale game. I think the 2-2 two -two at Rochdale onwards, Corey has come into his own. So I think that's probably the, that's what, fifth, six, seven, eight. The last five games, I think Corey has been virtually unplayable. And within those five games, he's scored two goals, he's had key assists, and so on and so forth. Now, some of you will say, Mash, that's only five games he's turned where you'd argue he's really been brilliant. But remember, Bromley had a stuttering start to the season. So when we're talking about the most influential players within the first nine games of our season, you've got to consider that everyone was kind of stuttering in those first four games. And since we've turned quote-unquote good, I think Corey Whiteley has been at the forefront of that defensively and offensively. In fourth place, no more um, drum rolls, people. <laughs> in fourth place, it's the one and the Look at this. Look at, oh my gosh, I've messed up the screen for this one. We have to work with it. In fourth place, can you guess the player? You can't even see his face because I've messed up the presentation of the screen. But in fourth place, Michael Cheek, needless to say, top goal scorer. It, as well, come on, it's Michael Cheek. Nine appearances, four goals. Um, I think for Cheek, it's four goals in his last five games. So again, as we've turned good, Cheek has been at the forefront of us turning good in terms of banging in the goals, averaging about just about one in two. Obviously, there's been a lot written about Michael Cheek um, because he's the top goals, top. He's a record goal scorer in the national league. He's as pretty, he's pr like we, we're so lucky. Colin and I spoke about it again in the last deep dive. We are so lucky at Bromley to basically have a guaranteed 20 goal a season, all competition striker in this level, at this level of football. Last season, Cheek didn't fire until the turn of the year. I think he scored five goals in his first 20 odd games. Sl worst season I've ever seen him have. Then in the back end of the season, Cheek came good, 12 goals in his in his last 20 games. It was no coincidence that when Cheek came good last season, that's what spurred our run to the playoffs, right? Along with other players, but when Cheek came good and when Cheek did what he does, we went on a run and we got into the playoffs. Well, Cheek has started this season better. Nine goals, four goals. He's doing what he does. There's no way you can have a top five Bromley players this season and not have Michael Cheek in the list. He missed a penalty on Saturday, so it could have been nine games, five goals. But we move, we work with it, keep up the form, Michael Cheek. And then in fifth place, initially, I had Ben Crowhouse. That's who I initially had. And then at the last minute, I changed my answer to Byron Webster. Byron came into the side, started the season. Was he injured? I think he started the season injured. So he missed the Halifax defeat. Um... And then he came into the side for the Barnet game. Um, now, obviously, we lost the Barnet game as well. Um, and that was the game where we basically we just had a we just had to patch together a side. So I'm not really counting that. Now, the reason why I've got Byron in, in fifth place is but uh, Byron's played eight of the nine games. So like I say, Mr. Halifax game came in for the Barnet game probably before he's ready to come in. But anyway, since that Barnet game, we've not lost. Right. And I think Byron has been at the at the heart of that. I, I just wrote about it in the good, the bad and the ugly. If you haven't read it yet, go to the Substack page and read the good, the bad and the ugly uh, reflecting on the Oldham game. But I wrote in there and said, given that there are some Bromley fans, and I'm not having a go. I'm just stating facts. Given that there are some Bromley fans who had written Byron off at the back end of last season. I think you would have to be churlish to look at his performances this season and not accept that he has been crucial in the reorganisation of our backline. We were stuttering at the start of the season and the side was crying out for a leader. There was, a, I think, when we were struggling, we lacked leadership and Byron stepped into the breach. Yes, OK, he's 36 years old. Yes, OK, in an ideal world, you wouldn't still be looking at a 36-year-old as your kind of central go-to defender and you'd be looking at others to step up. But 
I've got to give credit to Byron. Having lost his place at the back end of last season to Dej, Omar and Callum Reynolds, who were the preferred the preferred three, Byron in the last seven games for me has made himself undroppable. Yes, there will be teams who will tear him up for pace. But what Byron... And Byron's not even that slow. Some people... I actually think people think he's slower than he actually is. Anyways, whatever. What Byron lacks in pace, for those who say he lacks pace, he makes up for reading the game, organisation, structure and leadership. And as I said in the, the good, the bad and the ugly, it's no coincidence for me that Chin has marked, markedly improved over the course of his, what, nine games or eight games that he's played with Byron alongside him. So, I mean, we've conceded six goals in our last seven. Um, some might say it, we need more clean sheets, but I just think Byron deserves some credit. I think he's been the best. Put it this way, of the three central defenders we currently have, Callum Reynolds, Chinnacoli and Byron Webster, who's been the best of those three defenders? For me, it's Byron Webster. And not only has, be, has he been the best of those three defenders, he has been crucial and fundamental overall to, to Bromley's improvement. Um, in in like the last seven games or so. So I think the fifth best performing player for Bromley thus far this season is Byron Webster. Now, obviously, there's players who have missed out. Some of you will say Mash Ben Crowhow should be in the list. Some of you will say, and I, and I wouldn't disagree, but he's not in mine. Some of you would say best Topoloy, Topoloj, Topoloy should be in the list. And I wouldn't disagree. I think Bez sometimes gets overlooked because he's so damn consistent, although he was poor at the start of the season. When Bez is good, he's so consistent and he's so good at everything that he does that you almost don't notice him because he's a, he's a left wing back. So I could understand if some said that, that, that Topoloy should, should be in that top five as well. There might even be some who say, well, Mash, Louis scored two goals. How come you haven't got a place for Louis? Not yet. Louis's time will come, but just not yet for me. So that's my top five. Let's go through the list again in case you missed it. In order, Grant Smith, best player so far this season. Sam Woods in second. Corey Whiteley third. Uh, Michael Cheek fourth. And Byron Webster fifth. Let me know what you think. Do you disagree with that top five? Do you think that it should be in a different order? Would you have your order different? Would you have somebody else in the top five? Who have been your best... Sorry, who have been the most important... Look, I've screwed that up. Let me tell you one more time. Who has been the top five most important Bromley players this season? Get me in the comments below. Let me know what you think. And give a rationale. Give a justification. And let's chop it up. I'll be Mashal St. Patrick Hewitt, the host of From Bromley With Love. I'll catch you on Wednesday after the Dagenham, Dagenham and Redbridge game. Let's see where Bromley are at after that. Peace. Peace.